Good morning, I'm Arlie Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for January 7th, 2022. Uh, I want to focus on the situation in Kazakhstan as this represents an effort by the usual regime change uh, crew, including George Soros, including a whole gang of non-governmental organizations, NGOs, uh, Tony and Sherry Blair, uh, the former energy minister of Kazakhstan who is operating out of Kiev, Ukraine. This is an obvious effort to carry out a regime change on Russia's border to destabilize Russia, maybe to trap them into a, a very serious uh, uh, attack in Kazakhstan against the demonstrators to disrupt and divert attention away from what they're trying to do with the Ukraine negotiations coming up this uh, January 10th, 12th, and 13th. So just to run through a, a bit of the picture, we're still working on pulling it together. Uh, this will be somewhat of an abbreviated report. I know it's Friday. I did get questions from people in Kazakhstan, so let me just focus on that, and we'll see how this unfolds over the coming days. Uh, the basic point is the idea that there could be a negotiated settlement to the Ukraine crisis doesn't sit well with the oligarchy. The usual gang of suspects who are the war hawks, the military industrial complex, and so on, don't want to see a resolution. And so they picked on an area which is an oil-rich country, uh, a country which has problems, but what they're trying to do is to provoke a reaction which they already have there were violent riots, rioters in the street, uh, attacks on police stations, government buildings. 18 policemen were killed in the first day, two days ago, of the riots. And as a result, the uh, Russians and other countries have sent some uh, personnel in to try to quell the riots. There are reports from the government that the, they have evidence that these rioters are getting funded from the outside. They have, they're capturing emails. Uh, Facebook posts, and again, the usual suspects, George Soros, who targeted the former president, Nazarbayev, in the past, uh, Tony and Sherry Blair, uh, who actually worked for the former president, but we know that anything they're involved with is, is uh, uh, discredited, uh, and the, the non-governmental organizations that are involved in, in the riots. Now, among the other reasons for destabilizing Kazakhstan is that that's where the Russian space state or space uh, launch facility is located in uh, Baikonur. Uh, this is important for Russia's space program, but also for the U.S. Uh, but a destabilization in this country plays into the whole argument that Russia is authoritarian, it's undemocratic, and you can't negotiate with Putin. Now, the former Kazakh energy minister is named Mukhtar Ablazayev. And he is operating out of Kiev. He had to flee the country because he was charged with embezzlement. And as is the case, he's now in Kiev. He's claiming he's in charge. He's calling the shots. His party, the Democratic Choice of Kazakhstan, is based in Kiev. Uh, and so this is an ongoing situation. Remember again, the regime change capability has been deployed against those countries that, that are unwilling to submit themselves to the rules-based order of London and Wall Street. Uh, we saw this with Libya. We saw this with the uh, Syrian government of Assad. We see it with uh, the Ukraine coup that was pulled in February 2014. When they can't control the situation and get a submission, they go for so-called democratic regime change. Every single one of these democratic regime changes has led to a worsening of the situation for the people in the country. So when Soros says he's going to bring democracy and European-style standard of living to Ukraine, 
The Ukraine coup in 2014 dramatically lowered the standard of living of the majority of the people in Ukraine. The oligarchs did fine, but the majority of the people had their standard of living cut. The idea that there's democracy, well, take a look at Libya. There's chaos. Take a look at Afghanistan. The country was left in chaos, and now they're blaming the Taliban for the chaos that was conducted or created from 40 years of war. So we've seen this script played out before. Uh, the Russians have also. So we'll see how they handle it. But I, I want to just go back to Tony Blair for a moment because there's an important aspect of, of Blair's role in all this. Blair is one of the authors of the idea of breaking with the principle of Westphalia. One of the central features of the principle of Westphalia is against intervention into the other nation's business, into other nation's politics. Now, this was asserted always against Russia or against China, but has always been the actual policy of intervention of the transatlantic countries, the NATO countries. They never miss an opportunity to intervene when they say there's not enough democracy, which means that a government is rejecting international monetary fund conditionalities. They send in the democracy movement. Now, in countries that are poor, countries that have been hit with sanctions, uh, you can always find people who will be able to be willing to protest the government. Is that a democracy movement? Well, look how the people who engage in it are used. Look at Navalny. Navalny was promoted by British intelligence. Navalny was, his top aide went and asked a, a representative of the British embassy for $12 million to destabilize Russia. Navalny's movement was based on the idea that they would be backed by the West to destabilize the Putin government and overthrow it. Now, what, what did they bring to Russia? Sanctions. The, the idea that the Russians tried to poison him has been unproven. They refuse to provide the evidence that supposedly proves that the Russian Secret Service poisoned Navalny. So when you, you're talking about Soros, Soros' role in, in Ukraine, who did he work with in Ukraine? Victoria Nuland, one of the hardcore neocons. Soros supposedly is a left liberal. How do the left liberals end up working with Nazis and neocons? Well, that's the game of regime change. And it's directed from the city of London and Wall Street for the purposes of preventing nations from breaking with what Tony Blinken calls the rules-based order, which is the order which is imposed by the bankers, like the Great Reset, like the Green New Deal. It's imposed by the bankers to lower the standard of living, to stop industrial production, to stop energy production, and to essentially create a chaos in countries that might resist the power of the transatlantic countries. So that's what we see in Kazakhstan. And as it unfolds, we'll get more to you. As for Tony Blair, well, he was just given the uh, order of the, the most noble order of the garter by Queen Elizabeth. I think there are about 20 members of this. It's one of the highest ranking uh, honors you can get in, from the Queen. And it's obviously done in Tony Blair's long service to the British royal family and to the city of London. So we'll, we'll get you more on, on his role in Kazakhstan. In the meantime, we're going to have material up on our website in the next couple of days, which include, it's already there now, uh, are we sleepwalking into thermonuclear World War III, an extensive chronology of what's behind the Ukraine crisis. Uh, and we'll be continuing to cover these stories as they break. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you again next week.